Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning at Our Savior Lutheran Church in Nokomis. It's a beautiful day. Welcome to any visitors we may have and our regular members, in addition to those that continue to join us on our YouTube channel. Welcome. Friendly reminder, please silence your cell phone. Also a reminder that we're having choir practice for singing on Reformation Sunday. Choir practice will be this Friday, October 25th at 2 p.m. Valerie will be here to guide our choir again. So we look forward to that. Anyone that has a voice, any type of voice, please. We're no, looking for volunteers for choir. No. <laughs> uh, speaking of Reformation Sunday, our potluck dinner is next Sunday, October 27th, after service. The sign-up sheet is in the narthex. And a friendly reminder also to please wear red for Reformation Sunday. Red Reformation Sunday, please. And All Saints Day is coming up two weeks from today, on the November 3rd. A candle will be lit to honor your loved ones or friends who have left us in the past 12 months. Forms are still available in the narthex. If you could get those in, I would appreciate it. Book Club is Thursday, November 7th at 1.30 p.m. They are currently reading Salt to the Sea. So if you're interested, feel free to join us for Book Club. And Bible Study every Thursday at noon. We're still in Exodus. We're going into Chapter 10. 20. I'm sorry, Chapter 20. I had the number 10 because we're going to be studying the Ten Commandments. That's correct. Which will be interesting. You can also watch the class on our YouTube channel in case you can't make it. Uh, all these announcements, by the way, are in the new messenger. They've either been emailed to you or there, is, there are copies. Actually, there are not copies because I forgot to bring them in this morning. We will have copies available in our as soon as I bring them in, uh, which brings up the other subject. We still do not have internet. We still do not have phone. Thank you, Milton, for that. Uh, Comcast promises us by Wednesday at the latest, although it's been expedited, so hopefully they'll be in sometime before then to fix it. So if you're calling, please do not call the office phone. We cannot retrieve the voicemail. If you're sending emails, we can get emails at, at our homes. But if you have anything that's urgent or need to talk to us, please call Pastor Donner or myself. Uh, Hurricane, Mil Hurricane Milton update. We is. I think I told you last week, all the trees are gone. Uh, that cost us $2,900 to remove the trees and to level out the ground. They still have one stump to remove, and we still are looking at possibly bringing some fill dirt in and, and putting down sod to finish that off. The roof, we had numerous shingles missing from the old section of the roof and the newer section of the roof. We had a roofer out here a couple of days ago. And according to Chuck, he's saying it'll be somewhere $700 plus to replace the shingles for the roof, which is not horrible based upon what other people suffered. So right now we're uh, close to $4,000 in damage. It's not atrocious, but uh, yeah. And I hope all of you uh, went through it a little bit better than that. If you had damage, I'm sorry, but uh, it's living in paradise, living in paradise. Any other announcements? Okay, now it's time to sit back, relax, prepare our hearts and our minds for Christ Jesus as we listen to our prelude on Eagle's Wings.
going to do our confession from the font today. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the people on earth. 
Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. The first reading this morning is from Isaiah. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted, but he was wounded by our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. <clears throat> Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the so spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was outnumbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made the inter intercession by, for the transgressors. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 91. Please read it responsibly with me in the bold print. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. No evil will befall you, nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the sun. You will tread upon the, the lion, cub, and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. they know my name. They will call me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. <laughs> Thank you. 
The second reading this morning is from Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized? with the baptism that I am baptized with. And they replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. Now when the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be a slave of all. Oh my goodness. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise well, because we have no internet, I'm doing this on my tablet and I'm a whiz pray with me that I Heavenly Father prepare in me a new heart a clean heart filled with grace and strength so I can lift up your word and carry it to all the people in the kingdom Amen, Amen. now good morning everyone now please don't start timing this time as my sermon because these are pre-sermon announcements and then right after these very brief announcements I have a brief pre-liturgical presentation and then I'll start preaching but now I'm just talking to you with love so welcome to worship everyone on the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost and it's wonderful to see you all here today. And wonderful also to welcome those who are watching on the YouTube channel. Let me know that you're there. Send me a text or an email. I'd love to hear from you. Well, look at us. Don't we look a lot better rested today than we did last Sunday? We just went through some tough times, right? 
trying and scary, but we're through them. So now we can start looking forward to some fun times. And next week is Reformation Sunday, so wear red as we welcome Valerie and the choir. And then after services, we're going to enjoy a potluck brunch. Now for those of you on YouTube, sorry, but you can't join us. But we'll take photos of the feast. And you know this place. The tables will be groaning with goodies. And if you haven't signed up yet um, to tell people what you're fixing, there is a sign-up sheet in the narthex right next to the practically empty prayer pail. Surely, <clears throat> we all have prayers of intercession and many prayers of gratitude. So please take just a moment to write your prayer Drop it in the pail, and if you wish, take one out of the pail and pray on that today. And please, let's all pray for a happy, successful sale on November 2nd. And if you haven't told Elaine about volunteering your time to help us set up the sale or collect money during the sale or take down the sale, please do. Sign up in the Narthex next to the potluck supper list and the prayer pail, because we really need all hands working together. And now, let's look at the lectionary. But this is not my sermon yet. <clears throat> See, Tom isn't here. I could have gotten away with that. No. Today is not an easy liturgy. It's very difficult. All the readings today are mostly illogical. They're paradoxical. Listen to some of the conclusions that you're going to hear today. The cross frees us to be slaves. Mark says that Jesus actually teaches that today. My death means that you can live freely as a slave. Jesus is a paradox. So before we begin the sermon, I ask you to please remember that the word of God is alive and it is still speaking. So that means that the readings are multivalent, many different voices all speaking. And we need to listen to all the voices, even the voices that are between the words. So let's take our gospel reading today from Mark. We hear Jesus speaking, but we mostly hear Mark speaking. And just so you know, we don't know if that is Mark speaking, because many scholars believe the gospel of Mark is anonymous. And this anonymous writer is speaking to his community, and they have questions and fears, and we can hear them too. And we can hear the early church speaking, teaching us the traditions of that community. So we hear lots of theological insights that were never, ever mentioned by Jesus. But especially, we need to listen carefully because we need to hear the Holy Spirit. So now, Let's look and listen to the sermon today. Start the clock. Ready? Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, but Isaiah didn't write it. Um, it's anonymous. We call this writer Second Isaiah, or Deutero Isaiah, and he writes this poem that you just heard, and it is extremely complicated. And the meanings of the poem have changed over the centuries. Some people call it the suffering servant poem. But who is the suffering servant? Now you may have heard Jesus in this reading, or maybe an ancient king, or maybe even the prophet himself. But you probably think that the suffering servant is a male. The man is the one suffering and serving. Well, not so fast, say many women over the millennia. What about us? We suffer too. 
And couldn't this poem be about a community suffering together, like Israel or Judah? And what an absolute mess we hear about. Powerful imagery of physical disabilities, afflictions. Someone is wounded, bruised, bloody, and in so much pain. Now, I warned you about the illogical insights that we would discover in these readings today. Unlikely conclusions. But the truth is, God chooses to work with the unlikely. People who are unlikely to succeed. The underdogs. And we can hear that in our psalm for today. And I love this psalm. But we didn't get to hear my favorite part, but we did get Bobby to play it a little bit, my favorite part. It's at the beginning. He will raise you up on eagle's wings. I love that. Riding on God's wings. Now, did you know God had wings? God has everything, right? But especially comfort and compassion. Times can be tough, even for believers. But we don't have to worry because God tells us, I've got you. So who wrote this psalm? Not David. Some say maybe Moses wrote it after he finished building the Mishkan, the tabernacle. But most scholars say, nope, this psalm is anonymous. But I believe it offers comfort and protection and rescue to all of us. And that's the joy of the psalm. God loves all his children. And God created us for joy. God is everywhere for everyone, even the unlovable. God loves them too. And that brings me joy. And that brings us to our second reading today from the letter to the Hebrews. And it's a letter filled with priests, high priests, and sin, and Jesus being a high priest, and of course, the mysterious Melchizedek. Now, if we thought the first two readings were difficult, this one is a killer. Very, very complex. Now, do you remember Melchizedek? He's from Genesis 14. We met him with Abraham, and now here he is again, designating Jesus as a high priest according to his order. And we know that Jesus can't be a high priest. He comes from the wrong tribe. All priests are Levites, and Jesus is from Judah. You have to be born into the priesthood. It's not a volunteer position. It's a divine calling. So do you think that the anonymous writer of Hebrews is telling us that Melchizedek is an early version of Jesus? Do you think that this is a literary and a theological foreshadowing? Melchizedek is a king and a priest, and so is Jesus. But big, big difference. Melchizedek is just a mystery. Jesus is real. Jesus really dies for us so that we can live forever with him. And that's the gospel message, not just for today, but for every day. So let's look at this gospel story, and it's a good one. Jesus and the 12 disciples are on the way to Jerusalem. And we know what's waiting for Jesus in Jerusalem. But I wonder if the disciples know. They're just walking along when James and John, sons of Zebedee, come over to walk with Jesus. And they say to him, Teacher, we want you to do whatever we ask of you. Well, no wonder these two are called the sons of thunder, right? James and John. Now, don't you see them as two big, loud, noisy, boisterous boys? And sure, boys will be boys, but oh my goodness, can you imagine talking to Jesus like that? Give me what I ask for. Jesus, send me what I ask for. Well, you should be able to imagine that, 
because we all probably do that all day, every day, when we pray to Jesus. Here's what I want, Jesus. Here's what I need. Here's what I must have. Please give me what I ask for. We do it all the time. Now, in our story, Jesus is gentle with the boys. He asks the two brothers, well, okay, what do you want? And they told him, when we get to Jerusalem, when we get to glory, when you win, Jesus, grant us to be one at your right and one at your left. And Jesus says, oh, I don't think you know what you're asking. So now Jesus asks them, can you drink the cup that I drink? Can you be baptized like I am? So Jesus is talking about water and wine. And both men answer, of course we can. Teacher, we can do that. And then Jesus tells them sadly, yes, I know you will. And they do, because both of these disciples will be martyred later. But for now, Jesus tells them, I can't grant you that, because it's not mine to grant. Now, when the other ten disciples hear about this, they're not happy. They're angry with James and John. So Jesus calls everyone together for a lesson. And he teaches them, don't be like the Gentiles. Their leaders are tyrants, but not you guys, not you. You already know whoever wants to be first must be last, and you must be a slave to all. And as for me, the Son of Man, I must serve and give my life as a ransom for many. And just so you know, Mark is the only one who writes that, ransom. No one else calls Jesus a ransom. None of the other gospel writers. So this is probably the early church speaking, not Mark and not Jesus. So let's think right from the start. Do you think that James and John are being brazen or do you think they're being brave? Should they have asked what they asked? Well, think, what has Jesus been teaching for the last three years? Ask, and it shall be given. Knock, and the door will open. That's what we learned. So do we tell Jesus what we want instead of Jesus, instead of us telling Jesus, thy will be done, Savior? And what do these sons of thunder really want from Jesus? Well, they want positions of authority, prestigious positions. And this request reflects the historical context of the reading. We're in the Roman Empire. And this kind of leadership, highly structured and controlled, getting power literally depended on your position. There was none, none of this coming up through the ranks. Your name and your money determined your place in the power structure. And to be sure, they were tyrants. And lordy, lordy, did they ever lord it over people. But Jesus came to change that. And he did. Jesus taught. It's not about lording it over people. Rather, it's about using your power to get under people. So go lower than the lowest so you can lift them up, so you can be elevated. But how do you do that? It's confusing. And that's when Jesus calls the 12 together and teaches the cup and the water. They're the ways that we get the word. They're our sacraments. And that's why we come here every Sunday to this table, and we taste, and we sip, and we hear this is my body and my blood poured out for you. And if you've never been a communion assistant, you should try at least once. I promise that when you see the look on the faces of those to whom you have placed the body of Christ into their hands, 
There's nothing like it anywhere. Just try it once and see for yourself. And I promise you'll be calling Erica to volunteer on a regular basis because this is glory. This is God's gift of the Son to us. And then Jesus tells them about his baptism. Now Mark's community already knew about the death of John the Baptist. They knew that he had been martyred by Herod Agrippa. So this is not about Jesus being baptized. This is about you being baptized. And not a dainty, sprinkled with water from the font kind of baptism. No. Jesus is telling you, dive right into the font. Be submerged into the healing waters of the Spirit. We really, really need it. We need to be cleansed, reborn every day. And now let's look again to the cross. That's why Jesus came. And somehow James and John know this, and so do we. So just stop and think of Calvary. There were three crosses on that hill, one on either side of Jesus, and neither cross to the left or the right held James or John. <clears throat> they held convicted criminals who were judged not fit to live. And this is not a coincidence. Two criminals on either side of our Lord, not leaders, not emperors, not disciples, not believers, just two convicted criminals. Jesus is lifted up between two losers. And that's more than symbolic. That's the way Jesus teaches us to live and to die with him. Brothers and sisters, we are on that journey with Jesus to Jerusalem, to the cross. And we pray for the grace to let us serve with you, Savior. So will you step up to greatness by stepping down? Will you step off your high horse and walk with the ones Jesus came to save? Will you put down your cross and your ego? And will you pick up your cross and put down your crown and put down your ego? And will you carry Jesus out of this sanctuary and into the world for all God's children? And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.
stand as you are able as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. Holy One, we give thanks for all servant leaders in the church. Bless bishops, pastors, and deacons with humble wisdom and ground them in your love. God of grace, creative one, we give thanks for the delicate balance of the natural world. Kindle in us a spirit of caring strength in the preservation of habitats, food availability, and centers of refuge that all wildlife may thrive. God of grace, empowering one, fill the leaders of governments with a spirit of service that prioritizes those on the margins due to job loss, unemployment, and unsafe working conditions. May economic equity be achieved for all people. God of grace, restoring one, send your angels to watch over, rescue, and protect those who are injured or ill. Nurse those who suffer hardship, disease, injury, or difficulty with your comfort and peace. We especially pray for all those listed in our bulletin and in our messenger, and all those we hold in our hearts, and those we now name aloud in your presence. God of grace, abiding one, you call pastors to shepherd the congregation toward faithful living as servants and followers of Jesus. Inspire all ordained ministers and seminarians to ministry that challenges, engages, and comforts those in their care. God of grace, saving one, we give thanks for the disciples, James and John, and all saints who have faithfully served you. We rejoice in a promised place at the Feast of Victory that we receive by your grace alone. God of grace, into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer one another God's peace. with you. How are you, my girl? God's peace. God's peace be with you. God's peace. Betsy did a good job.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of eternal, everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and then he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Come to the table and taste and see that the Lord is good. Please stand as you're able, and let us pray together. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, and water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. And receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.
and share this good news. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.